this thing will stop recording my voice. You know? Let's go, yellow! Oh, back seat! No, that'll still record your voice. Oh, great. Let me know when we're doing the... not get too excited. I know. <laughs> okay, let me know when we're doing the wide thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you when things are going to okay. change on you. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I brought it. Okay, let me know. Let's go! I'll tell you to know when you're up. You can start practicing the volume so that's up. Check this out, ready? Got, Are those your fun facts? Alumna says a nice on the camera. That's me. Give him back. It's my annoying voice you've heard this whole time. It's a wonderful voice. Oh, thanks. It's the voice that's giving pictures to the people. Yes, you're right. No one will criticize. If they do, they have to go through me. <laughs> Come on. It should be... No, it's um Hikari. Hikari, yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Who I know? At the uh, Shawnigan Lake 
uh, provincial tournament here, or the BC provincial tournament being hosted by Shawnee Lake School. And uh, the game underway about five minutes in, still 0 0. And uh, it's Shawnee Lake in gold playing against Glen Eagle in black. Glen Eagle from Coquitlam area in the lower mainland. And uh, Shawnee, obviously, the host school here. Been some good back and forth action here. Shawnee, maybe a little bit more of the run of the play. Quick tap in the penalty there. To uh, Kara Stecco, who is trucking up very hard. She's got Maddie Nicholson on the outside. Shouldn't look a little offload there, but missed a good penalty given. And I think they'll play top and go again here. Quick tap by the halfback. And so Carmichael at 10. The Magic Banks at 12. The Jason McCall's on the left wing. And it is a walk-in try. How about that? Mr. Quentin Baker. Yeah, good afternoon, Nerds. It's um, yeah, good start. Shawnigan certainly controlled the play there. I don't think the Glen Eagles girls have touched the ball much at all. So uh, good reward for dominating uh, dominating the possession area. Yeah, it was uh, some very nicely uh, worked up-tempo rugby. Two quick taps, putting the defense uh, under immense pressure, and then making the uh, the good sort of uh, rugby savvy or ha having the rugby savvy to not just run into contact when they did do the quick tap tap the ball moving into space and, and put them under pressure yeah that's yeah, good, the good, good balance there good strong carry from Kara Stecco there and uh, Grace McAllister are already looking dangerous on the left wing she's got some bit of speed Version to follow here from Chloe Storsoff. Oh, that's a well hit ball and just a little bit short, but a difficult kick. Uh, pretty far out in the, in the wide channel there. Not so a nice start to the game. Yeah, it comes from a good soccer background as Chloe, I believe. That was, uh, yeah, well struck, just didn't quite have the legs. Yeah. You know, she's a good soccer player as well, for sure. She played soccer at a high level and uh, now is a bit of a full-time convert to the sport of rugby. The soccer's loss is rugby's game. Yeah, just, just looking at the Shawnigan girls before kickoff there, Tim, she, the, uh, the girls look very pumped up. You know, just uh, lots of eyes looking at each other and grabbing each other really tightly. They, they certainly um, are up for this semi-final on, on the home turf. Awesome. There's the restart. Drop kick short to Chloe. The try score. Nice step off both feet. Showing her athletic ability and a nice stand. And forwards are there quickly in support. They're clean up, but the ball is pinched. Uh, high tackle called O'Shaughnigan. Quick tap by Glenn Eagle to um, put the Shawnigan defense under a bit of pressure there. The Shawnigan tackler's got to roll away. She's just lying on the ball there after the tackle. So that's a bit of a silly penalty. Quick tap again. Defense is smart not to come forward. And now Maddie Nicholson puts the talk in. Well done. Referee said no knock on, so the left play continue on here. Moving the ball, they got an overlap to the left here. If they can move the ball. And unfortunately for Glen Eagle, somebody uh, had a little bit of white line fever there. And a classic case of let the ball do the work. Straight hand for the Bennett there. It would have been a walk in on the wide channel there for sure. Good work at the breakdown and a good steal by Maggie Banks. Uh, penalty called against Glen Eagle for the high tackle, but really the referee should have waited there and allowed for a bit of advantage. We were still going forward with the ball and uh, just maybe uh, a few extra seconds, possibly an offload could have gotten away there, and you never know. But easier said than done, having missed too many calls from the touchline. Going to be an attacking lineup for Sean in here, Mr. Quentin Baker. Let's see what they can do here or what they will do here. Looks like they've got one forward out of the line here. So no two forwards out. So they're going with a uh, with a uh, five-man lineup here. Yeah, De uh, Deja Banks and uh, Jasmine Bale lurking in the midfield. Maybe a big head up just to set a bit of a target there. Oh. Unfortunately, the uh, Shawnigan jump to get the timing wrong there. The Shawnigan jump was up too early. So it's free kick against Shawnigan. Forward! Oh. Oh, a bit of a forward pass there. 
That's another one. Two forward passes in a row. Okay, we pass out the back door here. We got a full back line here. Ball into the center's hands. Back to the outside Well marshaled there by Chloe. Fender right there on the ball. That should be a penalty for Sean again. Ooh. Come on, get back! Tough call, but that's the way it goes. Not back 10, so it'll be another penalty against Sean again. It should not be allowed to go quick here. We've got an injured player on the field here. It's Chloe story off. That would be a huge loss if she's hurt. And I saw that it looked like a stray boot to the face. Um, maybe a little bit of a graze or something. Hopefully that's all and she'll be back with us. Yeah. I sure hope so. A good response from the Glen Eagles girls, though. Um, didn't see much of the ball, but coming back into it now, we're really taking the game too far. And it's only right in for a real tussle here. And yeah, well, that's what we would hope. I mean, it is a potential semi final. Obviously, we are a little biased, and we hope the result goes our way, but we also hope that the game. Obviously, set up for a uh, set move here off the penalty. Two positive forwards, one dummy run, then playing off to the other one. And it looks like they're got the forwards off, same direction, go one more time. And they're going to queue up on the right hand side here and try and release the back to the full back line, it looks like. Trying to get back line needs to work hard to get on side. A little bit slow backing up on defense. The uh, halfbacks pass there, missed the number 10, which uh, was well cleaned up for the number 10. They'll take it forward. And I tell you what, I like to look at that young lady. She's got great hands. She's, uh, yeah, she's done a few things. Nice driving tackle there by the Shawnigan defender, Michaela Brennan McCann. Come on, push up! Push Hold up! Hold on to the ball, though. How about that? That's a nice little tackle. From, oh, she missed a roll. Uh, good commitment by uh, Hikari. Japanese exchange push student. Great tackle, another great tackle. This time from Maggie Banks. And stolen the ball. Here we go. Oh, unfortunately, that did not go to hand. Missed out, Chloe would have been better going, uh, try not to miss pass. Glenn Eagle are offside there, no, uh, no signal from the referee, but there were a lot of defenders that were never, never even in an outside position. Back when didn't roll away there, so penalty for Sean again. Such a good platform to attack off that quick uh, turnover ball with the counter right. So it didn't, uh, didn't quite go to plan, but here we are again, Sean again, but on the attack. Good turnover. That old, um, that old that did you hold on to the ball long enough to go through the yeah, offside. The you know, winger is offside there and again was not spotted by the, uh, the referee. In front of the kicker there. Well played here by Jerry Atkins, the shining the fullback. Put the ball in the full and, and uh, had a nice little counter there, but got herself a little isolated. Got herself a little isolated. Good driving length in the tackle there. It's all pretty narrow stuff right now. Uh, on, Mr. Oh, kicking away a bit of possession there. And uh, Jerry under a bit of pressure here from the center. Although she is uh, a bit of power Jerry Atkins. Bit isolated out wide there though. Ball was pinched in the tackle. Well played by the Glen Eagle defender. Take his over on the short side. As I'm watching this game though, Mr. Quinn Baker, I, I notice there's a lot of Glen Eagle players already starting to walk around the park, so I would be trying to speed the tempo of this game as much as I could. Yeah, that slowed down a bit, and just going back to my point, I think both sides would want a bit more ball security. Lots of turnovers at the breakdown, not being able to go uh, through the phases there. And if if Shanigan can keep the ball alive, there's, uh, there's big one of forwards where they feel it. Yeah. Not sure what's been called here. Probably not 10 again. Yeah, it's probably not 10. Against the uh, Shanigan defense, not back 10 meters from the, from the top. That we're coming to stop him just for the score game. Can't go quickly here. It is the second time they have him called for that though, so he'd be within his rights to give him a bit of a talking to. But play on. Quick top and uh, not much there. They just ran right into the defense. Not a lot of deception there. They can go. In close here though, they might just try and use the forwards. Uh, 
to the tight channels here. Another pick. Bit of a rolling ball situation there. Good driving tackle. Ball spilled out there though. Ooh. Not sure what that calls for. Nowhere near the mark. If the referee is actually correct here, it should be set scrum showing a good ball, but it's a potential semi-final. They should not be getting a second bite of the apple. Let's go, yellow! Just because they did it wrong. Good tackle on the halfback. He was slow to move the ball there. As we like to say, boompa! There's some good contacts there, and this will do a lot for Sean again. The old goal line stand, if they can repel this, the heads will be up for sure. But too many penalties though. And a try to Glen Eagle. Well earned try under, you know, a lot of pressure there uh, by the Glen Eagle team. But a good job of holding on to possession and rewarded with five points. Yeah, that's a classic old commentator's curse. Talking up the Shawnigan defense. And at that exact moment, a little uh, scrum half slipped through. And we'll do that again. Can you <laughs> watch for the conversion? Uh, yeah, we need Just because I always miss it. Somewhat yeah. unbiased, Mr. Clinton Baker, but we'll do our best. Yeah, good start to this game. It's uh, I, I totally agree with you. It does look like a Shawnigan is going to play to their strengths. They'll move the ball quick breakdowns and get this Glen Eagle side moving. They're very much uh, one off, off the rocks, keeping it nice and tight and, and doing it very well. Yes, uh, well, earlier on in the game they certainly were. Um, last, last five minutes or so, it's it really it's been a bit of a complete 180. It's been all Glen Eagle with the amount of possession they've had and, and being able to string the phases together. I think the Shawnigan defense would be... Uh, well, so it might be you know, a little bit more aggressive coming forward. You just, they, they're sitting back a little bit, and, and they need to come forward and, and take away the space and put them under a little more pressure. Yeah, you'll often hear the word line speed, and for those maybe aren't familiar, it is exactly what you're saying. Getting up, cutting down the time and space for your time. So important, maybe. So important. And it's just so much easier. It just gets you in that aggressive mindset as well. So, 5-5, five, five, conversion missed there as well. Um, here we go. Let's see how we respond. Well, that's a good kick. We need to get under that, but get under that ball. Grace is here. Pretty quick, good pressure on the, on the uh, catch. And we need another driving tackle there. Good job by uh, Isabel Ostrich. Putting them under good pressure. Come forward. They need to come forward and pressure that kicker. And that is good, intelligent play by the fly half. Noticing that Gracie was out of position from the, the, her hard chase on the kick. And it was a little bit of a misunderstanding, not understanding the laws of the game. The ball does not have to go back to the mark to be put in quickly. The ball can be thrown in quickly anywhere from behind the mark, but it must travel five meters. The ball didn't travel five meters that time. So it's actually a free kick against Shawnigan. It looks like they'll probably tap and run because it's a free kick. Forward pass again. Put down three off that same penalty move. Hold on to possession though. The big, turn the big number eight through the gap there on the, uh, the inside ball. Made famous by George Bregan of the Brumbies in Australia. Right off the left hand side there by the uh, back row player from Glen Eagle. Tackler not releasing is the call. Kick tap again. And shifting the ball to the left. And the referee sink play on, no knock on. And good off road there. They've got numbers if they can move the ball into space in the wide left hand channel there. And she's marshaled into touch. Sean Vincy seems a little bit rattled here, Mr. Clint Baker. Yeah, it's. Um, It'll be a good test for the girls. You know, I think the key, like the coaches will be saying, and maybe the senior heads, the Maggie Bankses, the Caras, all the leaders on the team just saying, settle down, ride this out, and uh, let's play our game. Let's, uh, the, the worst thing would be to get uh, to panic. Come on, come on. Wow, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Oh. Get through. Here's Gracie, she is quick. Let's see if she can get a bounce. Oh, gets a nice ball. Oh, unfortunate knock on. Keep playing, Gracie. Referees. Sometimes don't see the 
Sam, you've been out on. You want to play on? Play the referee's whistle, sir. Yeah, industrious stuff for uh, good endeavor. Checking the ball right in front of their sticks. An intelligent attacking kick there. That could have gone anywhere. That could have been a seven pointer down the other side of the pitch. Going back to that, uh, what put us under pressure there, Mr. Quinn. Uh, when the ball's kicked to touch and the the uh, defending line outside does not have the numbers at the, at the market, you must have at least two to set the line out. So the line out is not set yet. You can throw the ball in quickly, but it must travel in five meters. But it can be anywhere at the mark or behind the mark. And that's what often a lot of teams do. They make the mistake of trying to get to the mark. They can just chuck it in quick. Well, there's a free ball for Sydney Hall to half back. Good pressure there. The Grand Eagle player's off her feet. That should be a penalty against the Grand Eagle. He's playing a scrum. It's a scrum. He's calling a scrum. It's a scrum. Right? Well, he's, he's called the penalty. Is it in a scrum? Just an interesting substitution. See, Lucy Closdell on the right wings come off. I believe it's Emily Findlay. Looks like she's got a very heavily strapped right knee. I wonder if that's a tactical substitution or if uh, Lucy took a bit of a knock. Yeah, I'm not too sure. She's, uh, she's off here already. And uh, Emily is, uh, is a good athlete and a good young player. And has, uh, has been battling a number of or, uh, injury issues uh, throughout the season. So... She did play yesterday, did play well, so hopefully she's, uh, she's okay. That's a good scrum. Got to use this ball here, picked off the back by the number eight. Good bend into some space. We need a good clear out there for quick ball. Good driving work at the breakdown by, by Glenn Eagle there. He was too slow to react to the number eight, Michaela Brennan McCann, and made a good break, but then was isolated because the back row partners were not there. Good positioning by Jerry Atkins. See she do here. Nice step. She's into some space here. She's got support on the inside. And she's offloaded the ball to Emily on the outside. Might have been better served to play it back on the inside to Maggie Dan. Always a good option. Oh, really? She felt pretty safe under the high ball. Juggled that one a bit, but obviously had her body well positioned, so it wasn't a knock on. Uh, Gary Atkins comes from good rugby stock, of course. Uh, daughter of first yes, I'm girls here. coach Shannon yeah, from uh, PEI region, I believe. That's correct, yeah. No, she's from a rugby family for sure. And she, you're right, it's exactly right. She had great body shape there on, on taking the kick. She dropped it because of her body positioning the shape. Casey on the side was not a knock on. She was able to carry on and keep playing there. Casey Shea was mentioned with Maggie. Maggie is uh, one of our great clubs, senior leaders, and some stronger players. Comes from great rugby stock herself. Her father, Ryan, is here watching. No, I'm Ryan, a my mom, long time former coaches international Isfeld. player. And she coaches Isfeld, the uh, team? Yeah, so I'm and, just saying. Uh, with Mother her. Heather also was uh, was on the national team for the women's side of the rugby family as well. So, good rugby family there as well. Shawnigan's support players off their feet at the breakdown and giving away another penalty. I'm not sure what the penalty count is here, Mr. Baker, but Shawnigan girls have got to up the discipline. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The coaches will be getting really frustrated here. And again, you look to those senior players. Just, uh, tell the girls you know, it's an emotional experience. You want to be playing your best in front of your family and friends, but, you know, be, uh, be calculated as you as you give it your own. Sure, you got to keep your head. This is a it's an interesting game. You, uh, you have to play with emotion, but you have to also keep your head at the same time. Okay, here we go. Glen Eagle line out. It looks to be a full line out. They've got uh, looks like they have one forward out. Ball was not taken cleanly, but cleaned up at the back of the lineup. That's the penalty. That's that's just silly play. And after that lack of discipline, that's uh, that's a soft penalty. That is a clear rock. Ball's on the floor. You cannot go for that ball with your hand. That's just silly play. We are putting ourselves under immense pressure. This is lack of composure. It'll be another Glen Eagle line out here. Let's see what they can do. This, uh, this 
so is that the other one? Yeah. Got a little bit of a difficult so time hitting your target. So I, I would suggest trying to get up hard in the front to yeah. so you're gonna be searching try and, try and yeah, punch this ball. Okay. Doesn't look like we're gonna jump though. Maybe we are. Well, they're throwing short, so that's a much easier throw. They cut the shenanigan defense a little bit unaware. Is that pulling down the mall, maybe? Yeah, we call um, this the pulling down. Um, um, Mr. CB is like... It's always the tough one right there, whether it's a mall yet or just a tackle. The ball's actually got to move off the line to be considered as a mall. So. And then Murdy's head up. And then we're going to stop under the caution right here. Yeah. And that's that. I won't say anything. Come forward. You need to come forward. That's a good driving tackle. I think they can do us. Okay. Ooh, that's yeah, another one. Another good tackle. <laughs> What's he spotted here? There's uh, somebody's being uh, called out with the, with the captain. I think they're calling it. It's a matter of probably repeated infringements in and around the breakdown. So there's going to be a yellow card handed out here. It looks like it's uh, Kiara Stucco, who uh, is big loss. She's a big, strong forward who's a very athletic young lady who um, has made two or three of those tackles, so she'll be a loss for sure. Yeah, it's Kiara, not her finest moment, but holy smoke, she does the school proud. Uh, Kelowna girl, all-star hockey goalie, basketball player. Like you say, she'll be a real loss for the next 10. Yeah. Well, tried that inside ball again, and uh, that time it was defended well. Making sure there's a good driving tackle. See that with Maggie Banks, who's seen enough. She wants to come in and close it down herself as close to the breakdown as she can. That's that's good leadership right there. But Glen Eagle holding on to possession, stringing the faces together here. And ball short. He's a bit high, that girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good <laughs> defensive effort there uh, by Conigan, and uh, truthfully, truth be told, maybe a little bit lucky. Out of the uh, body height, it's been a little bit lower by the attacking side. It might have been, uh, might have been some sad faces on the Conigan. But this touch there, that'll kill you. And good on Glenn Eagle. They're opening up a bit here finally, trying to move the ball. That's it. Well done. Good counter rock by Shawnigan to drive them back off the ball and ball storm. Well done. Great defensive work by uh, by the two senior leaders, Maggie Banks and Chloe Storisaw. Really showing the physicality. They hit quick tap themselves, trying to up the tempo. And uh, Haley Stevens chucking it up hard. We need support over the ball there. And penalty there. The Grand Eagle tackle not rolling away. Good here. I want to do the same thing. Sydney Hall, quick tap, ball off to Manny Nicholson. She's going to jump it up hard herself. She's got a bit of space here, driving the legs. Got to make sure she gets the ball to the deck here. Tackler's got to move away there. And we've held on to possession here. Sydney Hall looking to clear the last feet. Playing it off the same way to Haley. Back to Chloe, who's showing good footwork and athletic ability to spin out of the tackle and keep the legs driving. And Shawnigan putting some face in and some good rugby understanding there to keep herself in bounds. Playing off the night again. Good double on the outside to Michaela Brennan McCann. Shawnigan finally answering the bell here and starting to punch back themselves. Ball off to the right again to uh, Isabel Ostridge, who is another good uh, strong hard runner from the hockey program. Another penalty. And again, that's a number of repeating defenses in and around the breakdown if we're going to be consistent. A bit of a talking to is warranted, but quick tap by Sydney Hall. Off to the right hand to Taylor Northcott, who's taking it up hard. Need to clear out there by the forwards. Gotten past the ball. Defenders offside, never onside. Referee spotted it. Sydney Hall needs to go right now and put him under pressure. Do not wait. Ball to the left to Taylor again. In the Gracie's hands. Oh, you have Corey on the outside wide open. Got to move that a little bit quicker. Corey showing her athletic ability. She's going to score. That's a great try by Shawnigan. 
Well, you know what, Tim, it's a great offensive uh, example of rugby, but the old added defense wins rugby games. You come back to that goal line stand, sure the Glitty Goose girls were a bit high, but that was heroic, and uh, that turnover sparked the counter attacks, and just the tails went up, culminating in that try. Great rugby, sparked by that defensive stand. You know, it's also, you know, it's also one of the old added in the sport as well, is the, uh, you know, the best offense, the best defense is a good offense, so the rugby is it kind of allows you, if you're good at it, to hold on to the ball and you deny the opposition just possession. So you're defending by attacking and getting numbers to the ball, holding on to possession, building through the phases and uh, creating some opportunity as you suck in defense and create space. But there was some, some good work at the breakdown there, making sure that we held on to the ball. That was, that was nice to see. I think she scored a 10-5 to to favor Sean, the uh, convert to follow. Let's hook to the left, and the score will remain 10 to 5 in favor of Shonigan. And we are, we've got to be pretty close to half time. And for that, uh, for the Shonigan girls to draw the scores level with one woman in the Sindon, as they call it, on the sideline. Now, Karis Jeff is coming back. That's really impressive. Good sign of guts and character. That ought to please the coaches. Hopefully the Shawnigan staff have got a good eye on the watch here. They, it's uh, in uh, because of the shortened matches here. They're, they're only 30 minute half because they, they keep five minutes in overtime if need be. It's only a seven minute sim game. Here's a restart. Well taken by Sarah. Went backwards. Playoffs gonna ship that ball. Ooh, got away with a little Chloe pass there, but Chloe, she's there. Gracie doing a great job to hold on to possession there, showing some good pace and. Unfortunate there, a bit of a knock on and a little bit slow to get to the ball. So that's half time right there, Matt. And uh, what are your impressions to this point? Yeah, just, just one little micro point. Again, I keep saying it, it would be great to have some uh, live replay there. But what I really like with, uh, with Chloe's last move, really going into the tackle, punching her hands through the tackle and feeding the offload behind the defensive player's back. If that had gone to hand, it would have been dangerous. Um, Overall, we've got a game of rugby in our hands here, Mr. Murdy. It's uh, back and forth, two teams with a pretty a di different set of strengths. This is anybody's game, I'd say. Yeah. 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 Uh, listening to you tell that about punching the hands through the taco, and uh, hearing you with your, your still a bit of a slight kiwi twang in your voice there reminds me of back in my play days being in New Zealand and having, uh, having one of my kiwi coaches come and push push my hands through the tackle and uh, such a such an important part of being able to free your hands up and uh, be able to offload the tackle it brings back many fond memories yeah probably some of my uh, earliest coaches words of one of my earliest coaches back barefoot on the wire up uh, playing paddocks the wire up and push both teams uh, Leading off chain to compose themselves here. It's anybody's game, 10 to 5. And uh, anybody in particular stand out for you, Mr. Glenn Baker, on the Glen Eagles side? I, like I said, I was uh, pumping the tires as the Glen Eagles fly half. She's got a very sure set of hands, uh, tactically quite astute, directs play pretty well. A little nippy little uh, scrum half as well, so I think their halfback pairing is. Is certainly driving their big pack of forwards around the pitch um, and they've got some pretty willing ball runners in the forward packs as well but uh, those two I think would be uh, would be worthy of some plays. Yeah no question we'll be with you there. We've got a we've got a couple of pretty handy forwards as well that are that are aggressive ball carriers and um, probably showing a little bit of inexperience with their body heights but certainly they're not lacking in their courage and, and aggression. How about the Shawnigan side? Who's impressed you? Yeah, I think, uh, let me see, there's in that last little passage of play, some of the, the leaders that you identified there, um, Maggie Banks and a few of the other girls, really counteracting with some of um, Jerry Atkins, like, like you said, looked pretty good when the Glen Eagles girls put ball to foot. Um, Gracie McAllister with you guys. I'd like to see her in a little bit more space. She's always seems to have one or two defenders around her, but she's certain. There's no doubt she's she's uh, a dangerous 
Yeah, no, player in the left wing. Yeah, no, she's quick. Hey, Haley like Stevens let off the shovel. <laughs> and Haley Stevens as well. I think she's just in that last passage of play carried really, really strongly, just belting into contact. She's a great story. She uh, she had her best game of the season uh, yesterday, and uh, hopefully more to follow in the second half here. But it was an interesting little sort of side story. First game her father's ever seen, and so he he was here for the match, and she obviously. Had a little bit of extra emotion working for her, and, and uh, was excited to have her dad here. And it was, it was a nice, nice thing to watch as a, as a sportsman, but also as a parent to see the to see that kind of emotion and response from a young student athlete. Lots of kids that are making their way up from the different classes, and uh, obviously there's lots of girls around watching from the, the different. The different schools here that are uh, at the event for the past couple of days here, so it's a nice little atmosphere. Well, what a celebration of, uh, of young women's rugby! It's uh, such a good vibe on Sean again, and we were talking. I guess we can't say enough. No, we've mentioned it before, but we'll say it again. The part that the grounds guys play in getting these paddocks ready for ready for the matches. It's the Canada Fields looking splendid. This looking fantastic. Guys. In particular, young Caleb, and uh, he has just put in massive hours in the past, over the past number of days to, to help out here, making sure that the uh, fields are spectacular, and uh, these fields get a lot of use. Our team's training on them full-time, we've got the rugby team, we have the 20 men's team training on it full-time right now, and uh, obviously there's, there's been countless games on here over the past few days as well, so it's well done by, uh, by the field crew. Here we are, second half is underway with a restart. Ball not taken cleanly by Glenn Eagle, so they're under a little bit of pressure. And pick and go around the corner from the tight head prop. Big strong drive. And they've done a good job. They're playing to their strengths, they're keeping it simple, nice and tight. They're not getting too far outside uh, so that they get isolated. I don't think they have, really have the ability. That's, the, that's probably part of the issue. And that's a good kick by the number 10 down the narrow channel there. Well played by the fullback, Jerry Atkins. Good step to beat her. He's got support on the outside, and she finds her. That's Emily Finley. Nice step off her left foot herself. Back inside to Jerry Atkins. Great support played by Jerry. And offloading the ball to Maddie Nicholson herself. Another strong diving. Another great offload to Hakari. This is fantastic rugby here. Ball's tackled there, and if they can recycle here, move it to the right. We've got numbers. Maggie Banks taking it up. She's got Chloe on the outside, and she's going to go herself. That's a great try, great response, great opening to the second half. Maggie Banks, fantastic try, but some great uh, play by Jerry Atkins and Emily Finley on the far left-hand side there. And then some fantastic offloading in the forwards to create that space map. Oh, absolutely. It's uh, keeping the ball alive. You know, just it's not, uh, not having to resort to taking it to ground. Girls rocking over, and uh, it's just so much quicker and therefore more difficult to defend. The, and Emily, like you said, linking up with Jerry, bringing on the play, working from sideline to sideline. The Glen Eagles girls just ran out of defenders. And well done. A good finish by Maggie. She could have also taken the option to pass to two unmarked players outside her. So yes, I think she made the right option. You know, that yes, there were two unmarked players. The defender got a little bit on her outside shoulder, cheating, recognizing that it was a three-on-one, and started to try to cheat on Maggie a little bit, and tried to push a little bit early, and Maggie saw that. It's okay, Chloe. And, and she's, uh, she's a big, strong girl. She's got also has pace, so she uh, she's gladly accepted that gap. Looks like the kick was uh, wide, and the... Uh, the uh, Sydney is over, so Kiara Steckles back on. This last two tries have been with 14 girls on the field, so uh, here we go. 15 5. And uh, lots to play still, though. They cannot rest on their laurels here. They've got to keep the tempo up. And the main thing here is getting numbers to the ball off the kickoff. Big game this weekend, Mr. Quentin Baker. The Blues and the Crusaders. What's your call? Uh, got, got to go with the heart on this one here in Auckland, uh, Whangarei boy, born in Auckland, lives in Whangarei, I'm the blues, blues guy through and through, I think they're going to do it. Right. You see it is, by 12. They were there off the field, I'm texting their heads on to be in the game. 
Okay, Glen Eagles maintain possession off the new start here, taking it up. And good work by Maggie Banks at the breakdown, steals the ball. We can shift this ball to the right. Here we go, we got Chloe starts off using her speed. Oh, she's got Gracie on the outside. She's moved it maybe a little bit late, but Gracie's showing some good footwork uh, herself. No tackle release there. She needs to get out of there. Sydney Hall clears the ball to Kiara. Numbers to the bird to the left. A little bit of a pass behind Maggie's on the space. And she has got power. Oh, unfortunately, the ball did not go to hand there. Ball was knocked on to a, a girl in front who played the ball for in an offside position. And that's why the penalty was given. <laughs> that would be a boop five. Yes, Maggie Banks. That is, uh, that is the sort of running that will uh, put fear into the heart of a defender. I uh, wouldn't want to be there myself. It's uh, yeah, quite a sight in full flight. One of our camera people here, alumnus and former female first team player Hazel Price, gave me a look of disapproval when I agreed that it was the correct call of the uh, penalty. But... Hazel, Lies. you're thinking with your heart. <laughs> guilty. I'm it's guilty. great to have Hazel back here helping out being a part of this, uh, this experience. Her mom is also coaching one of the teams here as well, so it's great to see the whole family involved. Her father Richard, also a former international player himself. <laughs> Uh, bit of counter punching going on here in the in the tight between the fours. Ball out to the number ten is kicking for space down the narrow channel. She's uh, Emily uh, didn't take it in the full, but didn't knock it on and ooh, was, tried to play it back in the uh, first a little bit, but was good idea. It's unfortunate didn't go to hand. Is he there tonight? No, unfortunately. So you know you have to. Again, they're, they're not, uh, it's not very secret of what they're trying to do here. They're just playing off the, off the, uh, off the rock there, off the number nine, and kicking the ball down the field. But unfortunately, they're kicking the ball to Jerry Atkins, that girl there, who is good. Oh! A tough call there with a the forward pass. And yeah, she's probably right. That's a tough pass when you try to pass over the top like that. You got to pass earlier, or as you said, you should not push your head through the tackle. You pass after the after and in the tackle. But you look better off just passing that ball earlier. Support player, support player in space. Oh, then I think um, the counter attack from Shonigan. What I'd like to see is rather than running back into traffic, a few times you'll freeze their forward pack. But I'd like to see them run into the uh, into the space the other side. A few quick passes, move the ball away from the traffic area. The other thing we haven't done yet is. Uh, is Jerry was able to buy a bit of space herself with her athletic ability, but she hasn't put the ball back off her own foot and uh, put the opposition under a bit of pressure herself. They, they tend to chase up hard and they, they don't really have anything in behind them, you know, covering. There's a lot of space in behind them. You know, as you get to the higher levels of rugby, it's all about finding space, and sometimes that space is in behind the opposition. That's why the foot is, uh, is a good option. Yeah, I don't think we put ball to foot once here. It's, uh, we did once inside our own two bit where Chloe cleared it and we got a, had a bounce and an opportunity to Gracie and it uh, almost, almost came off. Yeah, true. But that was the only time. In fact, it might be the only time in the last two games. Set scrum here, still Glen Eagle put in at the, uh, at the scrum. And uh, two pretty even scrums. Nobody really exerting too much dominance here. Shonigan did early on, but we haven't really seen too much lately in that area. Critical point of the game here. I think if Glen Eagles was to score, they'd get their heads up again. Shonigan could really drive a nail into the coffin if they could score next. Well defended. Tackler on their feet, contesting the breakdown. Ball here did not lose. Well, quick tap here. And Kiara trucking it up hard. There's, that's why we want her back on the field. Well done, good offload to Maddie Nicholson. We're right on her shoulder there, who's taking the ball forward the other five, seven meters there, set the ruck. And we need a, yeah, tackler is not releasing. That's two in a row. So we need some consistency here from the officials. That's what we were bid for. 
Ball to Haley Stevens off the floor. Moving the ball to the wide side here to the box. Into Maggie Banks' hand. A little bit of a pass bit earlier, but Chloe's gathered the ball here. Showing some great athletic ability and some great pace. Around the corner on the outside. Oh, unfortunately, just marshaled into touch about seven meters short of the try line. Come on, Chloe, get up. We need you. a girl. Well done, well played. A very noticeable, Tim, as the Shawnee forwards are starting to go forward more and more, they're starting to win those penalties. And that's, uh, you know, so hard to defend when you're trying to scramble back into position. So that's, uh, the penalty count has certainly switched back to favor of the girls in gold. 100%. Uh, when we I put it a substitution down. here. Haley Stevens off. 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 Haley Stevens uh, in this, and Even if you get away with it in girls' rugby match, because the physicality isn't quite the same as the like, boys' game. You know, the physical differences between the grade 9 boy and the grade 12 boy are not quite as much. Good pass from Maggie Banks off her right hand to the left. Chloe into space. Oh, again. She had a girl on the outside. Emily, who cleaned it up at the break. And well done by Emily Finley. Offload there as well to the support player. Ball taken forward there. Sydney Hall, the break guy's going to try to move it. Sydney's got a great pass. I just, I wish she, she would just bark at her forwards a little bit more and, and get them to try to give a little bit cleaner, faster ball. Always going to get a kick the field backside there. From time to time, yes, they do. Too nice, Sydney. Too nice, yeah. She's a, she, she's a nice kid. Don't need to be nice on the field, especially when you're trying to push your forwards around to get you the ball quick. Here we go, set scrum inside the 22 meter line for Shawnigan. And Sydney about to put it in. We got a pretty imposing looking back line here. With Sarah, Maggie, Chloe. And uh, young Miss Atkins and Gracie lined up to the right here. Jerry Atkins. So hard. See what they have on here. If they have any kind of move on here. If they do a little move off the back of the scrum here with the number eight and the twelve. Where's it with Chloe? Which is uh... nope. We're gonna go to the short side. Akira Brennan McCann to uh, to the open side flank. Nice He's gonna be back up. Forward, well done. Thank you, forwards a little bit here. Down the short side, field again. Same direction. Oh, unlucky, but good. Good intelligent, lucky. Trying to work down the short side there. Um, bit of. Uh, Inexperienced, being pushed into, driven in touchdown instead of driving back hard infield, but it's a, it's an interesting option. That was a tasty blindside. Although Emily could have stayed a bit wider, hugged that touch line, she would have uh, increased her chances. She would, if, not, if the other thing she would have done was she would have pulled the other defender wider, which would have made a little more space for the back row on the inside there. Tough throw to the tail there, and that's stolen by Shawnigan, driven up by Maddie Nicholson. And try given. Well done, Shawnigan forwards reacting to the overthrow. Maddie Nicholson. That takes the score to 20 to 5 for Shawnigan. You know, Matt, that is 20 to 5. That is a coach killer. When you throw the ball in windy conditions to the tail line out. And I have to give you one of these, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, well, the lineup has been a little shaky all, uh, all afternoon. Maybe not one of their strengths, so it was a risky move, and geez, they paid the price. But I was going to mention uh, Maddie Nicholson before. She's become more and more prominent and really well-deserved of that try. She's uh, such a good athlete, one of our crossover girls, uh, good hockey players, committed to Plymouth State University for hockey really showing the stuff on the rugby pitch, running hard and rewarded there. Well, you know, <laughs> they call it the money ball for a reason. So throwing the hard, flat ball to the front jumper is a really, really difficult ball to stop. And, you know, when you're, you're, you're under the cush, five meters from your try line, unless you are a professional rugby player, an international rugby player, 
for an extremely skilled uh, line-out unit, I would say go with the high percentage throw. Interesting how the Glen Eagles will respond here. That's uh, yeah, that's a tough one. They're going to have to really respond. Yep. Oh, might be a little bit of wind out of the sails there after that one for sure. So 20 to 5, and you uh, start to follow here. Leave it alone, Shawnee. Do not play it, do not play it, do not play it. Well done. It's going to be a set scrum at the half for us. Talked about this one once before, uh, Mr. Quinn Baker. You, this is the old trick play. The captain, who's an old savvy old vet, will tell the forwards to start running to the center. Referee will say, scrum a line out. He keeps his mouth shut, he doesn't say anything. Meanwhile, the big old savvy forward jogs up to the halfway line, chucks the ball into the fast fleet footed fullback, tries on down the NMR token channel. I think we just keep suggesting that until somebody does it. <laughs> I think we do. Made famous by Serge Blanco, the French fullback. There we go, pick up back in the scrum by Michaela Ben McCann. Short ball to Maggie Banks. Good fan, second fan in space. She's got support on the outside to Jerry Atkins, the fullback. And great forward, she's going to score. Come on, <laughs> let's get across that line. Atta girl. Well done, Maggie Ron Gibbon. That is a spectacular offer. Great support. Great rugby. Well done, girl. That is a fantastic rugby try. And uh, good to see uh, the emotion down. <laughs> 25 to 5. And the happiest person on the planet right now is Jerry's mother, head coach Shannon Atkins, who is just uh, hugging everybody in. And I think even a few tears, a little water work. She's walking down the field trying to compose herself after that. Uh, an emotional lady who puts a lot of time in with this group. And obviously, when it's your own daughter who scores, it makes it even that much more special. Conversion's good. Taking the score to 27 to 5 in favor of Shawnigan. So you know, after a real heavyweight tilt, it's starting to open up a little bit in favor of Shawnigan. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, you go back to that sideline, they're just so stoked, and uh, you can see, really see what a tight group they are. Girls who haven't played in this game, just enjoying it as maybe not as much, almost as much as uh, the girls right out there in the middle. 100%. So some girls chomping at the bit. <laughs> See, you really want to get out there. They'll get a chance. Yeah, yeah. But this is the semifinal, provincial semifinal. It's also the second to last game for the grade 12s they'll ever play in a Shawnigan jersey. So they've earned their right to get as much time as they want. Let's hope these girls can get that kickoff right. That last one was not so good. That's better. Again, a classic example there, Mr. Clint Baker, either pass earlier or don't pass. It's a difficult pass to make as you're being tackled. And unless you've got the old boom lowered for the boom pa, you're not going to be able to get that off, blow it off. I think I'm feeling the odd drop there, Mr. Clint Baker. That would not be uh, well received. <laughs> what a difference. We've gone a uh, classic uh, Vancouver Island spring weather we had a beautiful sunny hot day yesterday and now we're yeah like you said a little windy two spits of rain i'm not sure what the score line is going on in behind us it's uh, carson graham we're playing yale in the other semi-final and uh two big physical teams uh, they're playing after this carson's over there oh i'm oh, sorry they're playing after us so yeah, that'll be interesting to get to watch that sometime. Getting the girls to uh, show them to be able to watch who they play. That's good. Oh, here we go. Move the ball. Maggie Banks, let's go. Move it again yourself, Maggie. Oh, ho, ho, ho. good tackle by that girl. And uh, that ball's out. Picked up. Well done, great support play by Taylor, Taylor Northcott. Taking the ball forward there. And Tacker's got to get out of there. Sydney Hall's going to want to go quicker. She's got players to burn up to the left. Top the ball, Sydney. Don't wait for them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Top gives it to Kira, who's going to truck it up hard. Only one way with her. The direct line. Off with the Sarah to Maggie. To Chloe. Gracie on the wide side here. She's quick. And she's going to score. 
Get her down. That a girl. Try given. Jason McCallis with good hands by the inside backs. Maggie Banks and Coach first off to uh, put the, the right winger away in space. Taking the score line to 32. It's hard to zoom in. To five in favor of Target. How about that time? I keep going too fast. Yeah, I think uh, the phrase, playing the right to go wide. I think they've done the hard work up the middle of the pitch. And uh, the way Gracie wasn't getting the space before, there's, it's opening up there and she's taking full advantage. So, yeah, well worked. I think coming back, probably the Glen Eagles girls, are their heads are, are well blocked now. How would they respond to that uh, second, so they, uh, the try that took them to a 20 to 5 scoreline? The answer is not very well. Their heads have gone down, and yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, by human nature in some ways. 100%, but you know, the uh, all credit to the Shawnigan uh, team here, the Iron Women, they, you know, a, a team in the semifinal is not going to just roll over and back. And uh, they've, uh, they've earned these, uh, these opportunities by just creating the, this fatigue in the defense. You know, we talked about the heavyweight tilt and exchanging blows, but, you know, in order to exchange the blows, you have to be able to take the blows and then give the blows and they, uh, they've done well, taking everything that Glen Eagles can give them. And then they just... I think probably superior conditioning and uh, skill has uh, really started to show through here as we get into the later half or stage of the second half. Always the way it happens. How many times have you seen the All Blacks pull away from teams in the last 10 minutes of each half? It's really easy. Yeah, it's one of their calling cards for sure. Hey, it's an uh, interesting one. You mentioned the Iron Women, or you, the, uh, the Iron Ladies. And the Shonigan, it's their, uh, it's their pre-game cheer, referencing to the first ever Shonigan team. That, uh, is, is so favorite in the history. And even more exciting, the, the Iron Women, the original Iron Women, will be here tomorrow, helping celebrate uh, 30 years of uh, co-education, but 30 years of female rugby as well. And uh, the very first team will be here. At, and, uh, we're uh, helping support the girls as they uh, will be participating in the final. Nicely supported. Oh, tough luck. Great rugby, though. Great rugby. But yeah, no, the real, real uh, special moment for everybody. The school, a big, big moment for the school to have uh, to have that group, or that fabled group of the original Iron Women and, and uh, the current group as well. Unlucky, but really nice rugby. Yeah, that center pairing is uh, is quite something here. The, the uh, really starting to get a bit more space and really enjoying themselves. Sister Doyle and Williams should be uh, thinking about asking these ladies if they want to play uh, next week for the boys team. I'll do it. <laughs> Hazel says she will play, but she uh, she's graduated, so unfortunately I'm, I'm she's, she's not eligible. But <laughs> Maggie and Chloe would not would not hurt in the centers of any team. That was beautiful interchange. Uh, great skill. I'm sure if they both stick at this sport, we will see them for many years playing at the representative level, and uh, let's hope so. Set scrum here. Glen Eagle put in. And uh, scrum turned a little bit to the touchline, which is good defense. Good pressure by Michaela Benny McCann. How's that from your number eight? And steals the ball and offloads the ball. That kid is good. Play on, the ball was not marked on. Sydney Hall, great clearance to Maggie. Chloe on the outside. And she's got Emily Finley and she is going to walk. Oh! Good cut. Chloe story soft. That's supporting on the inside, following her pass. Well done. Good defense by Glenn Eagle to stop Emily from scoring. Go, Michaela. Well, this is a lot, a lot of big forward charge there. That girl is coming from the side, but uh, play on. Ball is off to the, to the supporting forward to the right there. Playing the same way to Maggie. And she's going to play it over the top to Jerry. He's going to score. Where's mom? <laughs> she's going to be in tears. It is a great try. 37 to 5. Yeah, I think a big uh, big recognition of uh, Michaela Brendan McCann there. What a set of skills, sort of uh, from the counter rack to the off road to uh, a few oh, other oh, things. Yeah. All she needed was she a chip did the tackle. She did the counter rack. She, she stole, stole the ball after the counter rack. 
And she then offloaded the ball. I work with people that Give don't have that kid <laughs> a lollipop. Well deserved. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen there, Tim, a little chip kick just to round off everything. Every attack and skill. And gathering it herself. Scoring the try, turning around with the uh, conversion drop kick herself. Fantastic rugby man. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, they're they're enjoying themselves. And the uh, coming, this is coming to the end here. Uh, what, what do you reckon? A couple minutes left. Can't be much time left. Yeah. Thirty-seven five, and uh, well, it's, uh, you can see the body language and energy here from the Glen Eagle girls are uh, is falling off considerably, and that's you know it's unfortunate. You don't you don't want to see anybody have a, a negative experience, but. But it does have to be given to the Shawnigan girls and uh, how hard they've worked and, and uh, been able to hone their skills and work hard on their conditioning. And that's kind of the uh, the modus operandi by Shawnigan rugby. Yeah, before credit where it's due, I think the Glen Eagles girls have uh, they've, they've contributed so much to this game and certainly done themselves proud. Just want to do one last shout out here while we have the camera working here for our. Main, one of our main camera people for the whole day, Hazel Bice, working hard there. Hazel, an alumnus from last year, captain of the running last year. And we have her on live on the feed right now herself, waving to all her fans. A very popular young lady here at the school, the head of her house, Kay's house, and uh, a great student and a great kid, and uh, fantastic to have her back here for the weekend. Only 18, though, so she's not old enough to take her old teacher out for a beer later, but maybe her mom will. She's here. So. I shouldn't have admitted that. <laughs> <laughs> Set scrum here for Glen Eagle. See how they can respond. Oh, we've got Mr. Doyle there, my commentating partner from yesterday, just walking by about getting ready to set a, a, a first 15 training session about to get underway. There's their boys uh, getting prepared for the. Provincial semi-final next Wednesday, or yes, uh, Wednesday evening, nice uh, Thursday, no, Wednesday evening against Oak Bay. Fresh off a good win against Carson Graham, which I heard was uh, yeah, quite, a, quite a competitive affair yesterday evening. Well, actually, it was against Oak Bay as well. It was the Vancouver Island Triple A final, and uh, it's just it's it's, a, it's kind of a strange setup, but uh, because of the rankings, uh, we go in. Shawnigan is ranked number one in the province, and Oak Bay is ranked number four. And it's in the 4A division, it goes directly into the semifinal. One of the top four teams advance to that uh, tournament. So they'll be facing Oak Bay for the third time of the year. And uh, should, be, uh, should be a good, tough, hard fought match. You could probably score themselves. Got to be close to full time here. It's uh, Sean the Shar a penalty award to Shawnigan there. Kick down the line for touch. And. Uh, It'll be an attacking line out here for Sean again. It's going to be close to the player of the match uh, time there, Mr. Murdy. Give it, give it a little bit of fault, or is there somebody that jumps to mind straight ahead? Well, you know, there's been a number of fantastic players out there. Uh, I, I, I do have mine. Uh, I, I am going to give the Tim Murdy man of the match to that girl there. He just took the line out with two hand teams, Michaela Brennan McCann. How about you, Mr. Quentin Baker? Give me another minute here. I'll consider so many, uh, so many different options. I, I think we'll be swayed by the fact that you are a, a long-standing member of the back, so not realizing that it's the forwards who are actually in the game, forgetting from your days of yesteryear. You're only as good as the men inside of you. Uh, we really appreciate the piano movers before we play it. And a top penalty here. Not a lot of deception. Yes, Just a big, strong, hard-running Kiara Stecco, who offloads the ball to Taylor Northgard, who offloaded the ball to Isabel Ostrich. And Michaela Brennan McCann to Sarah Mar Carmichael. Nice Chloe, nice step off her left and right foot. Still inside the five-meter channel, about eight meters away. Good luck ball. Sydney's got forwards lined up to the left here. Nice ball taken up hard by Taylor Northcott. And you're going to want it. Oh, numbers to burn if we move the ball. And oh, a knock on call. 
And it's gonna come back for a set scrum for Glen Eagle. And there's some excitement going in on behind us on field two back there. Not too sure what's happening, but obviously somebody must have just scored because there's some great excitement. Yeah, like I said, the, the vibe around the place is just so good. It's uh, so much rugby on display and so many young people having a great time. Fantastic. You're too quick. Set scrum here. Hmm? You're too quick. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's under a lot of pressure. Oh, she was lucky to get that away. But Grace McAllister, oh, she gathers it. Super clean. Sarah there, and good back row play there by Isabel. She's got Maggie on the outside, who's clearing her way to Chloe. And the ball moved out wide to Lucy Crosdale. And she's going to score. Classic counter-attacking rugby. Yeah, the ball starting this side, scoring in the final corner. Like you were saying, moving the ball to the space where the opposition is not. That's perfect. That's where, you know, it's tough if they, you don't have the skill to do it. But that's a tough, putting the fly half under immense pressure. It's a five-meter scrum, passing the ball back to the dead ball line to your fly half, the back row and half back, charging at you. Uh, putting you under pressure, so it's a difficult kick. And uh, if you have a number nine who can box kick, that is uh, that's that's real key there to be able to kick from the base of the scrum. Or what you, you know the, what a lot of teams do nowadays is they'll run off the back of the scrum and try and get on the front foot and try and get a create a bit of space that way. But just passing it straight back from a five meter scrum is tough. Yeah, she didn't have didn't have many options. Like you said, was uh, did pretty well just to even get it away. And that is short, and we got to be real close to the time. It is 42 to 5 in favor of Shawnigan, and there's still time for the restart here. Girls are excited, and uh, I think there's a young lady down there who did not play today, Captain Maria Guadarrama, who is super stoked for tomorrow because she's going to give it a go tomorrow and she is going to as she said earlier die trying what a cute right, I'm, I'm excited for her she's a great kid and a, and a really hard working back row player oh well, for sure so yeah coming back to your point I'm going to go for an unconventional I'm going to go the, the backs of the game the center pairing I think uh, Chloe <laughs> and Maggie you uh, can't go <laughs> to sir you can't go to <laughs> I'm doing it I can't separate them and I think as a unit they have been spectacular So there you are, how's that for motion? That is what high school sport is all about. Right there, that picture right there. The emotion, the pure emotion of high school sport is, uh, is really something to see and uh, what makes it very special. Yeah, that's a uh, few better feelings than knowing that you've got the, uh, the ticket through to the final. I guess winning the final is... <laughs> Is one that went up at such a, such an excited feeling and well deserved by the Shawnigan girls. Really stuck at it through the tough times, defended really staunchly, and uh, when the opportunities came, showed some blistering attack. Well done, guys. Yep, fantastic stuff. Well, that that was, that was great fun. I guess uh, I will see you same time, same place tomorrow. We will be on for the final. Good stuff, Mr. Murdy. Always a pleasure, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who watched. There were 31 people left. How many? 31. That's it? <laughs> oh, there were 31. It'll be over 50 or no good. Oh, really? That's how you usually see it. But also, what happened halfway through the cutout? Is there a couple shout outs there, Hazel? Oh, yeah, I know. I was watching. Yeah, the blue press saw that, yeah. Thank you.
Um, so we're, I think we're at 3.30 tomorrow. Right? I think it's a 3.30 game. We're doing the same thing again. Good. Okay. Excellent. You're doing fantastic. It's <laughs> fun. Um, is there a way I can turn off the sound so I can play Yes. I'm going to kill the, all the audio so you can play that music, and then I'll show you how to turn it on. Okay, cool. Perfect. Uh, let's all switch off.